all right you zeus lowing bastards here is my magic damage party build all right this is a complex one and yet it is simple and yet it is complex and yet it is simple so let's delve into it let's cover this guy he is my battle cleric this time as well but it's kind of different i want him to do only magical damage i don't even want him i don't want anyone here to use their normal attacks because there's no need for it so what i did i pumped a lot of stats into constitution that way he's got now 14,000 health so he cannot die no matter what they do he cannot die that's all that i need of him so the other thing that i did is i've implemented summoning considering that he isn't doing any damage and i want everyone to contribute to the full magic damage party summoning can help me out with that although these bastards these incarnates that you summon are not as powerful with their auto attacks as they are when they are without an element but we can infuse them with a powerful thing called cursed electric infusion to get that you need to combine spellbook from air tree and spellbook from summoning tree one of them needs to have source points as a requirement that way you will get cursed electric infusion when you infuse this bastard with cursed electric infusion he will be immune to electric attacks actually he will heal from them and we are going to do a lot of electric attacks with this party and also he's going to unlock electric discharge and what is more important closed circuit closed circuit is extremely powerful in, sh in its short range and it can deal devastating damage even without a crit so anyway with that said summoning is at max to have the fucker at maximum level so that we get the champion version of it i put one point into warfare to get some of the skills like guardian angel phoenix dive and rage and rage can be used on your incarnate to deal critical attacks with their basic attacks and weapon skills but i haven't even used it it just occurred to me to use it <laughs> well lots of stuff here so yeah so that's why we have warfare you don't need bouncing shield here simply because we are focusing on magical damage necromancer not that important here i'm not combining summoning and necromancy this time what i did i put a lot of points into hydrosophist and some points into geomancer so now i have complete defensive built with this guy he can cast rain which we desperately need to electrify people Armor of Frost, Cleanse Wounds, Soothing Cold, Restoration, Cryogenic Stasis, Healing Ritual, Global Cooling. I mean, all of this stuff that is defensive minded. None of them are offensive, offensive minded because he doesn't have stats put into intelligence. I also used Uncanny Evasion from the Error Tree, but that's optional. If you want, you can also put one point into Pyrokinetic and use Peace of Mind. That's extremely useful to clear Provoke, Taunted. I mean, that's Provoke, sorry another charm and other stuff like that from the summoning tree there is also a cool spell called dominate mind it's resisted by magic armor and considering that we're doing a lot of magic armor damage this is perfect for this setup flay skin is a skill from polymorph tree that nullifies resistance for two turns and it is resisted by magic armor this is perfect you'll see I did over 5000 crit with shocking touch when flay skin was applied to an enemy. It's ridiculous. It perfectly suits this setup. So what else do I need to say here about him? Yeah, our typical 45 man metal reactive armor is useless because we don't want magic uh, sorry physical damage and normal stuff far sight infusion power infusion to increase the damage dealt with incarnate elemental totem that is completely useless in my mind but hey why not use it if you want rally and cry that i did not use at all in the fight but fuck it let it be here right one more point to memory won't hurt anyone from the things that use source points i went with steam lens and that's it really didn't bother with anything else and inner demon but i haven't used that at all didn't need to Oh yeah, and obviously Cursed Electric Infusion. That's the thing you need. 
It costs two source points, so it's not cheap, but hey, I did not want to use again the most powerful skills like Hailstorm, Thunderstorm with that and for example Apothesis, you could wreck anything. I mean anything. So you just need to put Apothesis on every character and put enough points into Air Tree and then put some points into Scoundrel as well to increase the or two handed to increase the critical multiplier and just cast apothesis on yourself then firestorm sorry then uh, thunderstorm with everyone with every character in your party and everyone will be dead but i don't want to play like that i want to give you guys options when you don't have source points although this will also use some of the source points it's completely applicable in lower levels as well without all of these source point skills Leadership is there because he's a tank and I want him to project bonus dodging and resistance to everyone around him. Obviously I've used shield to buff him and I've also put a couple of giant thunder runes to increase his air resistance. This is very important. With this setup, if you want to completely copy paste this, you need air resistance. All right. Good thing that you can get is also Dome of Protection if you have on one of your characters. But that's optional and it's only if you have a custom built character or guy that you recruited from this Sergeant Zrilla. So that's it for him really. As for the talents I've put Walk It Off, Mnemonic, Living Armor. Far out man, elemental affinity. He doesn't need anything that deals damage, that would increase his damage. He just needs to be there to buff, heal and summon totems and incarnates. And dominate mind and, you know, guardian angel. Lots of stuff to do for him. He doesn't need to do damage as well. This is here resistance at the moment uh, from air spells, which is extremely important as I said. And now let's cover other stuff other people here is my first dpser but it's a weaker one because it's mainly hydrosophist tree hydrosophist is not great at dps but it's great at crowd control i've also put a couple of points into polymorph unfortunately i couldn't get fuck i didn't change the room but doesn't matter really i couldn't get enough a resistance on her which i should somehow but i have sucky gear so yeah that's one of the reasons here i've put two-handed because she's using stuff otherwise i would put scoundrel you don't need anything of these stats over here you just need two-handed doesn't matter what weapon you use you can use two ones to get bonus to your stats because two ones can give you about plus five intelligence if they are higher level, plus, plus six intelligence. But the thing is, you won't use them. So it's better to go two-handed or scoundrel. So if you have dual wielding, then go scoundrel. Why not? Because you won't get anything from it. Dodging, fuck that. You don't need that. Here I put all the points into Hydrosophist, couple of points into Geomancer, and what else... Polymorph two points. From Polymorph tree, as I said, there are a couple of useful things. Unfortunately, I couldn't get my hands on more Polymorph books, but the things you can use are Chameleon Cloak. Medusa Head is useless with this setup, don't use it. Because when person is stunned, they are immune to Petrified. And everyone will be stunned, so forget about Medusa Head. Heart of Steel is good. Uh, any kind of movement or spread your wings transformation... Spider legs transformation, flay skin, all of the stuff that you've already seen, they're all useful with this setup. So as I said, if you're using stuff, go for two-handed, if you're not using stuff, go for scoundrel, max out scoundrel. Or if you want, you can do both, max out both of these and go slightly less points into Hydrosophist. And you can also implement Huntsman, Huntsman directly increases damage but it's optional and you need to be on high ground to get any kind of use from huntsman 
so that's why I don't like to use it on mages, although it is the best if you're using more spell schools. Here are the talents, elemental affinity, far out man, hothead, savage sortilege, stench. I've implemented stench on every single character except the tank so that they do not get focused. It helps a lot, you'll see in the fight. And the rest is typical DPS stuff. From the spells, I only used fortify, you can add man, metal, worm, tremor, whatever you like really. And here I've added Chloroform and Cloak and Dagger. Cloak and Dagger to get more mobility obviously and Chloroform is good because it destroys magic armor and then tries to set sleeping if enemy does not have any more magic armor and that's our specialty with this build we can put them to sleep. You'll see how useful it is in the fight. Obviously we need rain. We got two people that are casting rain now. That way we can electrify opponents easily but in this case I've used all the offensive spells as well as the defensive spells. So she's got everything that you need to deal damage and heal people and restore their magic armor. Alright, now my electrifying bastard won. Stats into intelligence, rest of the stats into wits, get 14 into constitution so that you can wear a shield. Unfortunately, I fucked it up and I lost the shield, now I need to go and respect, but I can't be arsed really. Just get 14 points into constitution, then you can wear a shield. With shield you'll get so much more survivability and considering that we're not using a weapon at all. It really doesn't matter what you use here and shield can be the most effective thing. Get some air resistance. And one more thing I've implemented with her is jellyfish skin. You can get jellyfish skin by combining any Aerotherge book with any polymorph book. At least one of them needs to have a source point requirement. You can get that on every party member and with the jellyfish skin for two turns you are completely immune to any kind of electricity. Why shield on her? Simply because electricity is best used when you are near your target. Then you have shocking touch and the most powerful ability probably for this tree because it doesn't require source points or anything else is superconductor. This thing destroys lives, it wrecks everything, it kills families, this is absolutely insane. So that's why I want you to be in the middle of enemy troops unleashing Superconductor. Get rest of the skills really from Arrow Tree, I don't need to really say this anymore. Same stuff from Polymorph, get Flay Skin, Heart of Steel, Chameleon Cloak, Skin Graft get skin graft with these guys that are using air damage and I also implemented fortify and geomancers and man metal simply because I had some points into geomancy from gear so why the hell not right plus seven fucking hell how did I get that doesn't matter here is how combat abilities look I put 9 points into scoundrels so that's what I did error turrage 11 and you could put 10 and 10, doesn't matter really at this point. Minimal differences. And a couple of points into Polymorph, so that I can use everything that I need. Flay Skin requires 3 points into Polymorph. Skin Graft as well. Chain Lightning, very useful. And obviously the other thing called uh, Closed Circuits, that uses 2 source points. But I did not have it at all with her. Blinding Radiance, especially useful, and I've also added Cloak Dagger and Chloroform to her as well. Him, exact replica of her. I've also put a lot of Thunder Runes to increase their resistance, so his air resistance sits now at 83%, which is really cool. Put points into Scoundrel, got him a shield. Rest of the points arrow turge. Couple of points into polymorph as well, so that we have one more flay skin, skin graft, heart of steel, you know, the traditional stuff. And I've also put with him couple of points into necromancy, but mainly because he's undead. That way he can heal himself by doing massive damage and some of the damage will be reflected back to him as a heal. I also implemented to him dominate mind but that's because of the ring not because of the summoning points cloak and dagger chloroform, chloroform are in his skill bar as well superconductor 2 closed circuit you know the typical stuff 
So now you know the whole setup. And now I will show you how it all works. Typical stuff, Paladin Bridge testing. Did this a couple of times already, destroyed these bastards. So let's do it again. So that I can show you that this build is nothing to be fucked with. So what I will do here is use a bill. Start off with shocking touch. Unfortunately did not hit the ground. What I will do is keep turn so that I can use jellyfish skin with Sebi. She does not have high air resistance. I didn't have any good vendors to buy some good stuff from, so unfortunately that's what I'm stuck with. Shitty equipment. I don't understand these arcs. It seems like this arcs area was so rushed that I didn't even pay attention to it. Well, anyway, jellyfish skin. And now when we done when we have done that, it's time to use one of the best skills. Bam! Considering that our air resistance is really high in the group, it was minimal magical damage to us while the rest of these bastards received a lot of it. If it crits, you can guess it, it does insane amount of bloody damage. Gonna use encourage. Well, what to do now? She is also DPS, but the Hydro DPS. So what I can do is simply use Winter Blast on him. Solid damage, nothing too spectacular. I can also use Suiting Cold, but I don't want to, because standing in the electrified water benefits me. Here is Chloroform. That's why it's very useful in this build. I will skip the turn with this bastard because I have a special thing that I want to do with him. Don't worry, it's nothing sexual. I'm not like that. Well, actually I am, but not in this case. Let's summon more rain, let's electrify even more shit. And now we're going to use Cursed Electric Infusion on the bastard. Great, just bloody great. Loving it already, right? Everyone is good, everything is fine. Let's summon one elemental totem just because I have to use action points on something. He is not a DPSer, so he can only buff, heal, summon stuff. You know, the traditional things. Ah, crap, Sebik has been taunted. That sucks. Even with her high, actually not that high, but still high enough physical armor. She got destroyed by the bouncing shield. So this is the thing. Now with cursed electric infusion I can use closed circuit. And absolutely annihilate these bitches. Unfortunately, it wasn't a uh, it wasn't a crit, but that's all right. This guy will get stunned now. What? Not even shocked. How the hell is that possible, anyone? That's sometimes this game has really strange mechanics, unexplainable, really. All right, so let's use another superconductor, and it's going to cost me only two action points. Look at this! Oh crap, just be prepared that Super Godactor will kill your PC. I can do lots of things now. This guy is shocked, I might have to stun him. Sleep someone. I mean, lots of bloody options. I also have closed circuit on him. But what I want to do is use electric discharge and maybe stun the bastard, he's already shocked. Yeah, 
he's stunned now that's great just what i wanted and now it's my turn again and i have dominate mind available i think i got it from my ring something like that dominate mind is especially useful in this setup where you're doing a lot of magic damage so look at this now she is charmed and now i'm going to use chloroform sorry ah uh, made a mistake almost almost knobhead bam sleeping she's losing her turn this guy's holding his own he's got what 50,000 HP somewhere around there she's taunted but hey what can you do nothing is perfect especially in the paladin bridge Now she used Flesh Sacrifice, the thing that I wanted to tell you about. And she lost her shield because of it. I put 14 Constitution so that she can use the shield. Unfortunately, when she uses Flesh Sacrifice, she loses 7 Constitution. With it, she loses the ability to wear shield for 2 turns. So that's a sucky thing if you want to play Sebil this way. Flesh Sacrifice becomes not that great. So what I should have done is use Sebil like I did Loxe without the shield but I could not be arsed switching again the characters the party was already done so yeah there are a lot of options a lot of little things you can change you can add combinations with these mage party builds are insane I mean it's, there's so much stuff going on it's hard to pay attention to everything Alright, let's use Fortify on Sebi. Beautiful. I'm standing now high ground. If I had Huntsman, it could be useful, but I'm a stubborn bastard. I don't like to use Huntsman on Mages, although it is extremely useful and probably the best skill that there is. I just like to do stuff my way. Nah, this, this thing sucks. Hydra Sophist is really not good for any kind of DPS unless you unleash Hailstorm, but it's great for keeping enemies in line, crowd controlled. Oh, for fuck's sake, target the bastard. Another sucky thing if you're using an incarnate that is. Of a certain element you're losing on it on his auto attack his auto attack won't do as much damage all right I did not put power infusion on him so that's why it's lower but still it cannot be as high as with pure warfare physical damage that's something I've noticed as well armor of frost another totem on the ground and power infusion or actually farsight infusion it also increases damage if i'm not mistaken and grants him yep and it grants him magic armor plus ranged attack this is all good this guy can tank ton of shit so i'm not worried at all about his survivability he is the tank tank after all Oh, this is going to be fun. They are all arranged as I want them to be. I think it's time to unleash the hell upon them. Three. All right. I could have used Thunderstorm and stuff like that. It would clear all of them quickly. But I don't want to because you won't be able to use constantly three source points in every fight that you're in. So there's no point in doing that. But I am using the rest of the skills, because I don't see why not, really. When you think about it. She still got Jellyfish for one turn. So I will use Chain Lightning. And you can see the nastiness that it does. Sorry, forgot to toggle this. I think I can kill him. There we go. 3000 crit, not bad for a spell and sucky gear. 
Medusa head is completely useless with this setup because if you're stunning people they will be immune to petrified and considering that we are using electricity well it's not working that well with that setup gonna intensify the rain I want more pools of water beneath my enemies Oh, please just kill this guy. But still, I haven't used one thing that I was telling you about in the first part of this video, and that is flay skin to reduce the resistance. That's the thing you can use always when the enemy's magic armor gets destroyed. And eventually you will destroy everyone, even the guys who have high resistance to a certain element. Look at the damage now. Fucking hell. 5200 damage with Shocking Touch. One of the low level spells of Air Tree. I'm standing in electrified water. Let's see what Superconductor can do. Not much. There's Cloud there. So I don't want to waste it. So what I will do is use Blinding Radiance. Another absolutely amazing bloody thing. Ah, oh, play skin costs 3 action points. I completely missed that. But it's still worth it. So anyway, what I wanted to say, Blinding Radiance blinds stuff around you. Fucking hell, who would have guessed that Blinding Radiance blinds, right? Still, it is resisted by Magical Armor. So, it's a perfect setup if you have a couple of Blinding Radiances. Oh, what the fuck, I killed them both. Suits me fine. I'm not mad at that. Killing stuff is my priority anyway you can go back to sleep so the amount of crowd oh god damn it deflective barrier again oh for fuck sake and deflective fucking barrier I mean it's not his fault it's my fault for not reading no reading and comprehension skills on this bastard at all Really, you can't kill her. Are you fucking kidding me? Come on, give me that line. Give me that line. No. Well, that sucks. Well, that fucking sucks. Ah, she's stunned. I don't care. Time to move in closer. And now I can stare back at her. Actually, I can kill her with... Or can I? I don't think this does any kind of physical damage, so I will leave it be and maybe use Armor of Frost on Sebi. She needs it desperately. Maybe... No, it's not going to get removed, the sleeping thing. I think that's removed by peace of mind. That's another thing you can use. If you put one point into Pyrokinetic, you'll have peace of mind. And that extre that's extremely useful in every situation, especially if you get taunted. Alright, this guy just got out of sleep and he's now get, gonna get shocked. Let's also throw a ranged attack. Yeah, I don't care. Deflected it. Uh. But still, <laughs> I missed the death as well. So <laughs> now you see how bad of a player I am. Good thing is that I have some good builds so I can rely on that to carry me home. Country road uh. There you go. I hope you enjoyed the build and enjoyed the fight. I did. It just killed my PC that is already powerful, but hey, what can you do? These electri electricity spells are high maintenance. It's fun though, right? When you do that superconductor move or chain lightning or anything like that, closed circuit. It's powerful, it's epic. I mean, you have everything that you need. Thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to check out the description for possible donations if, if you would like to support the channel even more. But everything is most welcome. Likes, comments, subscriptions. Really, everything is most welcome. And that will be it. 
See you later soon. Toodaloo, motherfucker. Hey. <laughs>